Hello, and welcome to the first Red Flag Rundown of the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine. I'm Emily. And we did not expect to be doing this today. Uh, Absolutely not. This is no. totally, totally unprecedented, but clearly we uh, we had to get on here for you guys and the lights went out. And my room just lost power. So for those of you who don't know, because we are brand you know new podcasters, um, and you haven't read our, our cute little bios on, on Instagram yet. Um, I'm currently running a summer camp in the mountains and Emily is in Argentina. Um, the summer camp that I'm working at today of all days decided to lose power and we're running on generators that are definitely not going to be able to power all of camp until Con Ed turns the power back on this afternoon. Um, but we're just going to go for it anyway, because we have something really important to talk about. Yeah, honestly, Catherine, I'm surprised that of both of us, you've lost power before I have. That's <laughs> like fair. Argentina being Argentina, I'm I'm surprised I'm not the one who's lost power internet first. So yeah, this so is, I'm going to turn brightness up on my computer all the way it'll go and just do this in the dark and it's going to be great. It is. And I know we're coming a few days late, but we had to get our, our shit together a little bit here, but he's back. He's my back. boy is back. My boy is back. Yeah. Uh, so one of the reasons why we had to wait a couple days to make this happen is because I was kind of out in the wilderness um, with some of our camp um, and I didn't find out about this until, you know, after it had already happened and I was sitting on a beach in my pajamas after freezing my tush off the entire night. Um, and it was it was the funniest thing. So my dad texts me my own Instagram's Instagram story, um, but I didn't actually open it up. Um, so I thought it was just a post that I had shared about DeVries's drive being in danger when it turns out that it was Emily's post about DeVries losing the seat and Danny Ricardo coming back in. Yep. Yeah. No. And I, so I found out I'm literally on a work call and I like scream because I see something come up on my um, Instagram, like news, like, I don't know whose post I saw or not that I was scrolling Instagram while I was working. It was like, I think it was like F1 somebody, um, but it came up like breaking news. And I literally like screamed and people on my work call were like, is everything okay? I'm like, yes, but no, but yes, but keep going. It's fine. And I immediately like, I'm sending like screenshots to everybody I'm posting on our going off track I'm like sending it to my f1 like group chat like oh my god oh my god oh my god um I was freaking out I was shaking I'm so excited Danny Rick is one of my favorite drivers so I was very excited um huge news coming out of f1 so I think everyone on the planet is very excited um such a great person to have on the grid again so I'm very thrilled very yeah, I, I was I was sitting on a tarp. And when I finally opened Instagram and saw what you had posted on our account, I yelled across the campground to my best friend who was helping us as lead this excursion. Um, and I just like blurted it out. And everyone just turns and looks at me and is like, Catherine, what are you talking about? And I'm like, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Um, but it was it was very important that I yelled that out. And, and yeah. then I just dove into Instagram and was like, I know we should be packing up camp so that we can drive home, but this is also really important. But also at the same time, I was like, is this true? Because there's been speculation going on. And I was like, I need someone to actually confirm this. And that's when like the F1 um, app, I think actually came out with the breaking news. This is confirmed. And then I was like, okay. Cause I got really nervous for a second. Cause I was like, normally Catherine does our stories. And I feel like I'm maybe posting this too soon. She's going to kill me. But at the same time, I was like, no, it's, I think it's happening. I think it's real. I think it's real. And then when it was confirmed, I like, I almost shed a tear. I was so excited. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was. And because I think the first, you saw the speculation. And then when, I, by the time I got onto Instagram, I saw the Alphatari post. Yeah. Um, oh, and, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. That's, that's the one that I saw. And I threw that up really quick. And I was like, and then I texted you. It was like, oh my God, it is real. Um, And it is also really, you know, it doesn't entirely come to a surprise because Red Bull is the most ruthless team on the grid when it comes to their driver changes. Like, yes, you know, Drive to Survive really dramatized Botas leaving his seat and being replaced by Russell. But if you look back at like the entire history of between Red Bull, Tara Rosso, and Alfatari, like this is 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is kind of the eighth slash ninth, depending on how you count it, um, time that this has happened. Yeah, it's pretty par for the course for them. Honestly, like Helmet is a G, so ruthless. Like, I I don't know the exact quote, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it was pretty much like, why would we give Nick like two more races when we already know we're going to pull him? Cause like, he's not going to give us anything more. Like we already know what he's doing. He's a 28 year old. He's not a rookie. Like we know what he can do. It's not good enough. We're pulling him. And it's like, damn. Okay. Like, yeah. And I mean, I personally, you know, I love the whole sensationalism over, you know, DeVries getting in that Williams after doing the Aston Martin, you know, free practice one. And then, you know, beating Latifi, but he also managed to accomplish something that Latifi and Nikita Mazepin both couldn't or didn't, which was losing their drive mid-season, um, which, you know, it, it's it's kind of sad because like that's like the type of story that you really want to see play out well. And unfortunately, you know, Nick was, you know, A, just not in a position to be successful in that car. And then B, also just, you know, didn't drive it the way that Yuki Tsunoda has managed to drive it. And he has been able to outdrive this car um, to, you know, I mean, obviously not great success because Alphatari is at the bottom of the constructors um, standings right now, but he's still managing to get like near points where DeVries just wasn't able to do that. Yeah. And I mean, personally, like, I don't know. It, it was cool to see him like step in last year but at the same time like seeing his interview on drive to survive last season where he was like I'm gonna step in and lead this team and blah 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 Yuki this Yuki that and I'm just like but we love Yuki he's our little pocket rocket like this little this little man like he's so cute we love Yuki we love his radio it's like everything is stars because there's not one like curse word that sky sports can actually put up on the screen like and then to have nick just like shoot him down and you haven't even like put in a full season you've had one drive and like i don't know i just from the get-go i was kind of like "Eh," put off by him and then there was this whole lawsuit that like was like this whole drama whatever so i think i don't know I don't know. I don't know. I'm just happy to see Danny back. That's I, all I can say. That, that's, that's really, it's, it's, it's really, unfortunately, it is less about Nick and what Nick did or did not do. And more, and more about, about Danny. Because, because Danny, you know, it, for, for, you know, I don't want to say for better or for worse, but Danny is the star of, of Formula One. Like Drive to Survive really got that right when they looked at all the drivers and they looked at all the drivers who were willing to participate in that first season. And they found this crazy Australian guy who is going through some serious drama at his team and is deciding on what his future is going to be. And like Drive to Survive really cemented Danny Ricardo as the star of Formula One in a way that, you know, for all that Lewis Hamilton is one of the best modern drivers in the sport, that, you know, there's there's that charisma factor that Danny really has. Uh, yeah. That, and he is so beloved by the American audience and is just so ready to, like, you know, everybody's just like, Danny in Vegas, Danny in Vegas. And now we have Danny in Vegas. Danny in Vegas. And you can't not love him. Like, he's so lovable. You can't not smile. You can't not laugh. Like, he's just, he is everything that anyone could ever want from a driver like yes he had some rough years at McLaren but now that he's like oh, some rough years but now that he's like back with a team I don't know I'm I'm excited to see what he does in this Alphatari like I'm interested because Yuki's like like you said like kind of like bordering on points like I feel like he's our solid like P10 P11 driver but like Danny's a good driver so what is he gonna do with this like shit off Atari you know what I mean yeah and especially like if he's pulling you know qualify you know like pole times or close to pole times in the Red Bull that we know he can drive and you know he he was a very successful driver you know at Red Bull for for a lot of years and it just you know came down to the fact that Max Verstappen is Max Verstappen and that's not going to change I know Max is not Emily's favorite driver Max is one of my favorite drivers <sighs> I um, okay I respect him he's good but like 
Mm-hmm. But but yeah, so 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 he, we know that he can drive a good car. We know that the McLaren was not good, and we also know that the McLaren was just not a good fit for Daniel. Um, and those are things that do happen, and unfortunately, it just happened to happen on this streak of decisions that Danny made in his career that you know led him away from Red Bull, led him to a a moderate time at Renault um, and then to a McLaren team that just really didn't fit him, but that he is still their best driver, you know, you know, Lando will eclipse that soon, but there was a point where Daniel was McLaren's best driver in a lot of years. He still has their only race win. Um, which in the last decade, right? Yeah. And even though I am a massive Red Bull Verstappen fan, I would kill to see Lando at the top step of the podium. Would kill. Well, he's he's just another driver. Like you love him. Like he's exactly. just so cute, and and like you can't not love Lando. He's just yeah. I don't know. He yeah. gets so excited like when anything good happens. Like the wee. Like it's just I love him. But so let's oh. let's do a quick. So we don't really need to go into the entire history of Red Bull midseason changes, though. My favorite does happen to be um, when they switched out Max Verstappen for Daniel Kvyat, and then the next season Kvyat lost his ride, and just the whole part where not only did Max Verstappen take Kvyat's race seat at Red Bull, but he also took Kvyat's girlfriend. I just love yeah, that. That's- that whole that whole part and like this this podcast isn't really going to be about the social side of f1 and f1 drivers but that whole part is just very much a part of what formula one is and i just like that story just makes me giggle it won't be about the social but like the social does play into things it does. there's always the social aspect of things of like i don't know yeah we'll go into that in our inaugural episode which will come out in a, a month um <laughs> but The silly season has come early, and so we needed to talk about this, and this is very important. Um, So why don't we, I I just want to, I picked out five drivers that this is kind of going to impact the most. Um, Nick, Daniel, Yuki, Checo, and Max, and we can just like go down the line and just, I want to talk about, you know, how this is going to impact them throughout the rest of the season. And I think, you know, to start things off, you know, we really did talk about, you know, the whole Nick situation, but I also think Nick is going to land on his feet considering he was just spotted in Monaco having, you know, lunch or coffee or brunch something. or whatever with Toto he was with Toto he's and he's he's already put the Mercedes hat back on with his comments about you know how Red Bull stole the 2021 championship from Lewis which like I know that's a very touchy subject amongst the fandom I woke up at 4 a.m to watch every minute of coverage of that day in that race um so I, you know, I get it. I'm happy because I like Verstappen. Did Michael Massey actually screw up or did he give something that was really good for the sport and everything? We don't need to hash that out today because we don't have six hours to talk about it. Um, but I do, you know, I Nick, Nick has the Mercedes hat back on. Toto will put him somewhere. Yeah, Toto will. Toto really has a hand in every pot in F1 and if he likes you he'll make sure that you land on your feet so I think Nick will do just fine yes he lost his seat for the rest of the season will he still be around in F1 yes so yeah well I mean Toto might even put him at Williams next year depending on how things go with Sargent which we just we just don't we don't know yet because silly season hasn't actually started yet even though it has hey hey Sargent with those upgrades, I mean, we weren't in P20. We weren't in P20. So yeah. I don't see Latifi ever getting P11 last year. So he's already a step up from that. So yeah, that that's true. I think, well, I think Latifi did manage to score a couple of points, but not very much. All right. Yeah. Uh, we Daniel. digress. We digress. Daniel. <laughs> we, we go off track and that's kind of the point of this. Um <laughs> But Daniel, what this means for Daniel is, yes, Daniel is back in an F1 car. It's amazing. But he's also in a really not great F1 car. No, but I think it's a really, really, really good opportunity for him because this is his chance to be like, hey, horrible car, but let me show you what I can do with it to prove I can take over Checo's spot for next year. That is my personal belief. 
Yeah, this is this is really his his audition, audition. for for 2024. Um, and you know, why don't we just go straight into Checo? This this is going to put a lot of pressure on Checo. And uh, I personally think that he's kind of moving toward an upswing because he traditionally does have a streak of shitty races every year. And I feel like despite his little qualifying issue um, issues last couple of races, he's still putting in solid points. But this is Red Bull and this is top team on the grid Red Bull where the only acceptable outcome for their drivers is one, two. Um, So the fact that Pacheco hasn't been on the podium in a minute, that's a, that's really going to light, that's, you know, going to light a fire under his ass and really put, you know, Daniel in the position of, you know, potentially driving for that seat. Yeah. And also I can see like if Daniel, does really, really well. It's going to put pressure on Checo to do better. And if Checo does better, he'll probably keep his seat, but that also gives the opportunity for Daniel to keep his seat at AlphaTauri. AlphaTauri and Red Bull are going to work more closely next year. I see AlphaTauri's car improving leaps and bounds next year. It'll put Daniel in a better car next year, maybe competing for better points, better positions next year. Um, I think, I think Daniel out of all five of these drivers we're going to talk about, I mean, besides Max, because Max is Max and doesn't count. But I think Daniel, of all these people, is probably in the best position. Honestly, if he shits the bed completely, like, it is what it is. He came in to save them. He's in a shitty car. It is what it is. You know what I mean? But if he does really well, he does really well. He gets to keep his seat for next year. But I think Checo is probably in the worst. Well, Nick lost his seat. But I think Checo is probably in the has the most pressure on him. Um I would not want to be Checo right now at all. Yeah. Yeah. Checo's got a, a, a pre, you know, pregnant wife at home. He's struggling with his drive. Um, is it not? Hold on. Is it not Horner who is like, yeah, if Checo's not in a car, he's like making babies. Like, I'm pretty sure that was a Horner comment. Yeah. It absolutely was. I, I love Christian Horner. He, he makes the, he's not the best commentary, but yeah. So Checo's, you know, I have a soft spot, soft spot for Checo. Cause I really loved his, his arc on drive to survive when he was leaving force India. And when he kind of got, you know, screwed out of the seat, um, because of the whole, you know, if Lawrence Stroll owns your team, Lance Stroll has a seat, um, which is something we will definitely touch definitely on. talk about daddy Stroll. Yeah. We, sure. we, we will definitely talk about it, especially, you know, the, the hype train that is Aston Martin, um, is, I think it's still rolling. Even though, you know, Fernando has not been where he wants to be at the moment. Well, and honestly, like going back to Christian Horner, like I don't, I wouldn't put it past him to talk to Helmet and be like, hey, how can we motivate Checo? Let's throw Daniel in the car because he's doing so well. Maybe that'll light a fire under Checo's ass to like actually do something. And if not, he's out. Like, I don't, I don't, like, yes, we're all like seeing it, but I don't doubt that that was their strategy to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also I, I, I don't feel like, you know, when, when Horner says, you know, Checo seat is not in danger. I don't necessarily, necessarily feel like he's covering for, yes, it actually is, but we're not talking about that with the media. I think that, you know, there's, you know, they definitely have the faith in him and they know that, you know, he will pick things up. Um, And it's just a matter of when's it going to happen? Cause the Red Bull fans are, are waiting for more one twos, please. Yeah. But Again, to talk about our next driver, Max, he can win the championship on his own, like you said. So yeah, if, as long as as long as Checo can like get a point here or there, honestly, they can win the championship without him. So yeah, I don't I, think that's ideal, but like it this is doesn't what it impact is. Max at all, to be honest. No. Max is gonna continue, you know, obviously the big storyline is all of these teams that are coming up um and and are are, you know, that are retooling their cars and they're they're bringing these upgrades and they're getting closer and closer to the red bull that and and everybody's like well you know red bull had the you know the cap and the penalties and blah 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 because of everything that happened um but i i still don't see currently a car that can actually compete with the red bull i just don't see that happening because it's not just the car it's also the driver and max is just insanely good well, and that's the thing, like looking at Checo and Max, it's not just the car, it's yeah. the driver, because they have the exact same car, don't, because they haven't brought, because like every other, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm horrible at monitoring upgrades, which you guys will find I'm not the best here, but um, like technically engineering, but a lot of the cars are coming upgrade one, and then the next car is getting it, but Red Bull hasn't brought a ton of upgrades, so Max and Checo pretty much have an identical car, yeah. And and they're not 
driving the same. So it's not just the car. Yeah, this this isn't like a situation like with Mercedes last year where Lewis was struggling because he was getting all of the upgrades that, that, that they were testing out and George was just driving the regular car and there goes power again. I was um, just going to say, you have power, now you don't. I had power, now I didn't. So so the, I don't, so this is not the situation where like Checo is getting the upgrades and is, is testing things out unless it's what happening and they haven't told us, but I don't think that's it. Um, so it's just, you know, you know, Max is going to continue to be Max. He's going to continue winning races by a large margin, especially when, you know, Ferrari decides to be Ferrari and screw their drivers over. Um, and he's going to continue. Don't even get me started. Why do you have yeah. to bring Ferrari in? I'm this? sorry. We will talk about it plenty. Um, but, you know, he, all, he's going to continue driving people crazy. He's going to continue making Toto upset with his dominance. And that's the world we live in right now. And, you know, I, I don't see that changing throughout the rest of the season, even as teams bring more and more upgrades. Yeah, I think the only thing is like, I think McLaren's too far behind, but the upgrades on McLaren looked really good. And Oscar and Oscar got screwed by the safety car. But Oscar and Lando, if they could finish two, three, the rest of the season, Checo's going to have to step up because Max can't carry. I don't, I mean, I'd have to look at the math, but um, I don't think that Max could carry the Red Bull for the rest of the season for constructors if Lando and Piastri keep finishing two, three, like Checo would have to do something, but yeah, that's the only, and I, I do think he will. And I think that, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a matter of time. And, you know, maybe this, this week off will give him time to get his head back on straight or, um, but he also has the benefit of a Red Bull that if you have a track where you can overtake, um, he will he'll overtake. Yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll overtake easy. And, and that's something that sometimes people do forget is that, you know, some of these tracks are not overtaking friendly. Like, you know, you can't overtake at Monaco for beans, um, but we still love Monaco for other reasons. Oh, so this year was actually exciting. So good. Bumper cars. Good. Um, Bumper cars. And then for, and, and lastly, for, for Yuki, this, <sighs> this just means that he's got a new teammate and it means that he doesn't have to carry the weight of the team all by himself. But I don't think this is going to be anywhere near a situation where Danny's going to get into the car and completely outdrive him. No, I think so. I think this is the most interesting because I think Yuki could benefit from a mentor. Because if you look who Yuki's been paired up with, it hasn't necessarily been like someone who can he can learn from and really like be mentored by and look up to well he looks up to everybody but like <laughs> I mean I'm as I'm I'm as short as Yuki is so so do I but like I really think it'll be good for him him and Danny have a good rapport they get along well I mean I know him and Gasly like got along well but I think him and Danny have a good relationship Danny can teach him some things I think Danny has really grown over the last few years I think it'll be a good relationship and a good partnership and I think Yuki, one, can relax a little from not having to carry the team, but also it might stress him out because it's like, I'm now with a star, like that kind of sucks. So I don't know. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch this. I think it'll help Yuki grow up and grow a little bit, but not like, but at the same time, Danny's like a fun loving, you know, guy. I don't know. I think it's going to be really interesting. I don't have full gathered thoughts on this yet besides the fact that it's going to be really interesting to watch because it's actually someone I think Yuki can grow and learn from and Yuki isn't going to be like this still kind of new guy to F1 and having to like carry a team so yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Yuki's not a rookie anymore and he hasn't been for a long time and that's something but I still see him as a as, yet I know I still see him as a rookie but I think it's because like he's like still in that like young guy yeah because he's well one he still acts like it and he like has temper tantrums all the time but I think Danny will help him kind of settle I really think it's going to be a growing year for him even though we're like halfway through but I think it's going to be a good year for Yuki yeah I, I, I it's 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 going to be it's it's Alpha Tari's outcomes have just completely and totally changed I don't think they're going to be back of the grid anymore or you know back or back of the standings at least there's pro still probably going to be in the back of the grid because you know we can talk about how great of a driver Danny is all we want. And he's, but if you have a shit car, you have a shit yeah. car. And he's very familiar. Like I, you know, I fundamentally don't think that the Red Bull and the Afatari are that different. Um, I know that they are two separate companies and two separate organizations that happen to be run by the same people, but 
it's still a Honda powered car and, you know, Danny knows how to drive that. And yeah. it's, it's going to be, I'm, I am just, I'm really excited to see the first intro video and where they input Danny and all of the marketing that Danny's going to have to do to like get him into all these materials. Um, I'm <gasps> really excited to see this this week. I didn't even think about and, that. Yeah. He's got a lot of stuff to do. He's got to do the, the intro. He's got to do photo shoots for Alpha Tari. Um, he's got to do, you know, all, all the marketing materials. Like we saw it in Drive to Survive when they were switching, you know, Albon and Gasly. There was a lot of Photoshop happening. So there's a lot of Photoshop that's going to be happening between this week and next week. I didn't even think about that. Oh my God, I can't wait for his like painfully awkward intro. I mean, it won't be because it's him, but like this whole year, the intro is just painfully awkward. Yeah. And you also notice that like Max is the same from the year before because he's like, I don't want to do it again. Yeah. No, and I did. George's is just iconic. Oh, I know. Did you see Lando and Piastri like making fun of it? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Like Lando took a picture of just like the arms out and like they were like making Piastri like do it as well. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And then what do you think this, this, because this, this is a big change you know, coming into the rest of the season and then it will impact next season. So what do you think it, this means for the future of silly season? Cause we've got two more races and then we have the summer break where everything's going to go down. So, okay. Hot take. And I could be very wrong. I think this is going to put a pause on silly season because I think everyone's going to want to see how Danny does before they start making moves. Cause like, I don't think Red Bull is going to like sign a new driver or like get rid of Checo because I would think they're going to want to see how Danny does. I think everyone's going to want to see how Danny does for the rest of the season before they start making moves. So hot take, I think silly season might not be so silly. That's actually a really great point. I, I, I definitely agree. I think that the, the big news will probably be a little bit, you know, we, we're not going to get last year's silly season with the Oscar Piastri incident, which is one of the funniest things to happen in formula one ever. Um, but I, you know, we still have, we have a lot of questions. Um, you know, there's all these rumors about who's going to be, you know, taking Carlos's seat at Ferrari. Cause it feels like in two years, you know, in 2025, you know, Carlos is going to be out of Ferrari, if not sooner. Um, and then we have the big question of what happened, there goes my power again. Um, what happened between in those contract talks between Lewis and Toto? Like what's happening there? You know, well, Toto has come out and said a million times, we owe him an eighth championship. He will have an eighth championship. We are going to get him an eighth championship. And I, I, one, I love Toto. You know, I love Toto. Everyone, I'm obsessed with Toto. I think everyone loves Toto. Like he's just like a level. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I think everyone, he's just a lovable guy. If Toto is that adamant about it, I have a hard time believing he's saying this so outright and publicly. And then Lewis like turns around and like signs with someone else or retires. I also think we're seeing a much different Lewis on the track. Like Lewis, and so, I don't remember who said this or what article I was reading, but Lewis is a much different person this year. Like he's part of the club like he is interacting with drivers like and I think we kind of saw a change last year with Seb retiring like he paid for the dinner and he organized the dinner like that's a new Lewis we're not used to seeing that Lewis Lewis was very isolated I feel like very on his own I think he's kind of starting to become a different type of driver and like enjoying these years and I don't think he's quite done it I could be wrong. He could be enjoying his very last year or he's trying to like come into his own and be like, I want to enjoy this. I want to soak up like every last piece of this I can because like I've been doing this one way and it's not working. Let's try it a different way. But I, I don't think he's going to leave Mercedes. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, it, I I think it would be the funniest trash fire ever if he decides to side with Ferrari, but it's never going to happen. No, he's not a Ferrari driver because here's no. the thing. He sees the dumpster fire that is Ferrari. Like, why would he do that? And I think Toto and him have such a mutual respect that Toto would not do anything that isn't trying to get him an eighth championship because push comes to shove, they will throw princess george under the bus so that like 
Lewis can have his eighth championship. You know what I mean? Like, Toto respects him enough that if they're going into the last race, of the, like, hypothetically, they're going into the last race of the, of the season and, like, George is in front. And if Lewis, like, beats George and he wins the championship, they'll tell George to, like, fall back so that Lewis can win. Like, that's how much respect Toto has for Lewis, which I think is great. Like, if you have someone like that in your corner, like, that just shows that's where you should be. Whereas, like, at Ferrari, it's like, oh, Carlos has the pace, but we kind of like Leclerc more. So, like, hey, Carlos, like, let's go for the obscure plan that you don't remember because, like, it's insane. So, yeah, you got that. And it's like, Jesus, I can't talk yeah, about I, right now. I, I think that, you know, I, I personally don't see Lewis getting that eighth championship. Um, I think that fundamentally losing in 2021 broke something in him. Um, he's still one of the greatest drivers of all time and one of the greatest drivers on the grid. Um, but I just, where Red Bull is right now and where Lewis is in his career and his age, I don't think he's going to be hey. driving a million years like Fernando. I just, I think he's going to want to do something else. I was um, going to say, don't, don't throw that age card out there. Cause look at Alonzo. I mean, I, I trust me. I, you know, I, you know, Fernando is having the time of his his life right now um but I just I I think Lewis you know I I just don't I don't see Mercedes giving him that eighth title with how competitive Red Bull is right now um and then you know Lewis will go off and you know do what retired Formula One drivers do whatever I don't know I think I think give it like two more years under these regulations and then I think Merck could be competitive I don't think it's gonna be the, it's not obviously it's not gonna be this year I don't think next year but maybe maybe in two years maybe but that means he'd have to stick around for two more years I don't know this is all speculation yeah, and I, I mean, know absolutely I think, nothing I don't think that we're gonna really know what's gonna go, go on with Lewis until they announce the contract and then we'll have a better picture of what it, what it looks like. Cause I don't think it's going to be, I, I think at maximum, it's going to be a two-year contract. I don't think we're going to see anything longer than that. Right. But again, Toto's come out and has said, if he wants to stay, we'll keep him. Like, yes. Why so would yeah. And I think, yeah, I, but I, again, I think, oh, I don't know. I, I know for a fact, I don't think, I know he's not going to Ferrari. There's no way, but here's the thing, Ferrari is shooting themselves in the foot. Who would want to drive for Ferrari the way that they're handling things? Like it's an absolute disaster. I don't think right now you can out, um, I, I don't think you can overlook how Ferrari is strategizing. And obviously, you know, this is Fred Vassour's first season as team principal. So things are going to change and there's a lot that he's just stuck with right now. But I don't think that you can overlook how bad it is just to say I'm going to be a Ferrari driver because Ferrari is one of the most iconic teams in Formula One I know I know and I think like an Albon who's driving for Williams he's driving the heck out of that Williams right now and if they call him up like he would jump from Williams to Ferrari in a second but I don't I don't think like Lewis would jump from Mercedes to Ferrari you know what I mean I think it's situational and I don't think Lewis would be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to win my eighth championship with Ferrari just because I want. To. You know what I mean? Like, it's I think it's right. I think it's situational. And I think it's definitely. But I understand, like, it's Ferrari. I mean, I'm a Ferrari girl. I love Ferrari. But right now, they're they're hard to love me. They're hard to love. It's a really hard life. But no, I'm really interested to see what happens with Carlos. Because, like, again, Carlos is driving. I personally feel like he's driving better than Leclerc but he's not getting the treatment so it looks like he's driving worse than Leclerc so I agree with you we 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 have had this conversation about every single race we're like <gasps> every every race we're like this um yeah I think that um yeah Car Carlos is is going to go somewhere else and I wouldn't be surprised if he leaves before um, I I think that another team will be willing to buy out the, the end of his contract with Ferrari um yeah. so it'll be interesting to see where that I don't think this is going to be this year I think this is going to be a 2024 move um yeah. but I think it's going to be I think you know even if silly season is not silly like this I think that there are going to be some interesting driver moves um and that that will lead to a very different grid next year yeah. Well, I don't, but again, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think it'll be as silly as we're like hoping it. Cause like pre Danny, I was like, this is going to be silly season at its finest. And now we just got it a few weeks early. So yeah. 
yeah, who knows? Maybe this is silly season and our silly season rundown when we actually launch the podcast in August is just going to be like, hey, you know, we're just going to repost this episode of the Red Flag Rundown, um, which will be our, you know, anytime something happens that is outside any of our planned episodes, um, we will red flag it and do a really quick rundown, which obviously this is, you know, a 30 minute rundown at this point. Um, But that's fine because we go off track and that's what this podcast is going to be. Like now we've just gone into a whole silly season recap, even though it's not silly season, even though we were just going to talk about Danny Ricardo. A silly season precap. Um, recap. Yeah, so that that's what this is. Um, this is what we're going to be doing. This will be posted on the interwebs in some way, somehow. Um, and um, if you are curious about a lot of the things that we've been talking about and, you know, don't know the names, don't know the incidents, don't know the people, um, we have been working on basically an F1 cheat sheet, which is less so cheat sheet and more F1 Bible of, you know, relevant terms, relevant people, all of the drivers, all of the teams, you know, relevant team principles, um, relevant media personalities that you see on race weekends. Um, all of these, you know, work, it has all of these things. It's going to give you information about race schedules, locations, you know, previous, you know, last season's winners, upcoming winners. It will be updated throughout the season. Um, cause I think that's better than just a, doing a static PDF. Um, but we will have that available to you as soon as, um, it's finished, which as um, I am, you know, running a summer camp and Emily is living in Argentina will be at some point. Um, well, it's but- not that I just, I'm living here for a long time, but I'm currently studying for a CPA exams, which is like taking over my life. So, and we decided to start a podcast anyway. Cause like, clearly we have nothing else going on. So obviously. So, so the, the F1 cheat sheet will be available soon. Um, as soon as I stop adding things to it, because I just keep finding other things that need to be in it. Um, and more people. There's a lot going on though. It's really important. Yeah. And and also to like, take a step back, we realized that half of our audience is in Argentina. So we're trying to like also layer in some, um, some sky sports people. So when we're like, oh my gosh, Martin's gridlock, you guys know who Martin is. Yeah. And even if you are, you know, an American who is new to Formula One, like most of the people that I'm working with who I can't shut up about, you know, about Formula One to, you know, this will give you all the relevant information of who is Crofty, who is Martin, why do we love them so much, who is Catherine's least favorite Sky Sports pundit, which I will try not to be too mean about because I just don't (laughs) want to be that person, but there is somebody who is my least favorite you will probably find out come Suzuka. Um, And if you watched last year's Suzuka, you will also probably know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, And so all of, we want you to have all of this information so you can have one place that you need to go to. So you're not Googling, going on Wikipedia, trying to navigate Sky Sports, let there be light. Um, All of these things. Um, So it just makes your life easier so that you can just go and enjoy the sport, which is not nearly as overwhelming as it looks. No, it's really not. And like, honestly, I got into F1, like, well, we'll do this whole rundown, but like, I got into it super easily. So it's, it's really fun. I mean, like, my parents are getting into F1 now and because I'm forcing them to, um, because I'm doing this podcast and if if my mom can get into it, anyone can get into it. So yeah, pretty, pretty much. And I, um, I will tell my story of how I got into F1 and it's, um, it's it's less entertaining than you than I'm making it out to be, but on a personal level, it's just it's um it's a little awkward. Um, but we will do that. Um, our first episodes of the podcast will come out after the summer break. We're shooting for the week of August 21st, where you'll get the real in-depth who we are and why we're doing this. We'll do a silly season recap such as it is. And then we will get into the first post um, summer break race weekend and, you know, start in on our predictions and talk about what we're expecting from the race. Yeah. I'm so excited. I am too. Oh my gosh. (sighs) I can't wait. I just, I literally cannot wait. I know. I I just, I just can't wait to like talk about this out loud and not have to like rapid fire like text things constantly so I mean we're probably still gonna do that like 82 times but also I just love that it's constantly an Instagram DM and like not even real life text messages 
Yeah. Yeah. We have exclusively interacted by way of Instagram DM for what, three years now? I don't know. Maybe less. Maybe less. Yeah. But like we, so real quick intro, we used to work together years ago. And then I stopped working in, in our, our field. Emily stopped working in our field. Emily moved across the country and then across the planet. Um, and we reconnected when we realized that we both enjoy formula one. That's a lie. We reconnected in the, um, dressing room line, <laughs> the dressing room line at Zara. at Zara in the, um, in the mall in Phoenix, Arizona, yes. randomly. <laughs> Yes, that 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 is correct. I I was wrong. We reconnected then, and then we found out that we both liked Formula One, um, and and here we are starting a podcast. And for why we're starting this podcast, and why a famous person has encouraged us to start this podcast, you're just gonna have to wait for about three and a half four weeks. Yes, I know. Like calendar math is really hard for me. I don't know why, but I'm like it's the thirteenth, and it's gonna be. In I don't know how many days. <laughs> Math is hard for us. We are not the physics experts you are looking for. We're just the, we're just here to talk about the sport. And the no, I'm, I'm good at math. I'm an accountant, I'm but, but calendar math is hard for me. So that's true. And this has been the first episode of the red flag rundown of the going off track podcast. I've been Catherine. I've been Emily. <laughs> and there is more of this to come and we're really excited. And one day I will have a backdrop that is better than just my messy bunk bed. (laughs) Thanks for going off track with us guys.